How does an index make your SQL queries faster? Also, how do you know which index you should add to improve your database performance? In this video, I'll give you a practical walkthrough of SQL indexing, what you need to know to get started, and also how to take a look under the hood of your SQL queries to understand which index is being used and what you can do to further improve performance. First things first, we're going to need a database. I'm going to run a local instance of Postgres using Docker. The command for this is docker run, and then you specify which image you want to use. I'll be using Postgres 18. So if I execute this in detached mode, it's going to start Postgres behind the scenes. And we can confirm this by taking a quick look at Docker desktop, where you can see my container is up and running. So now we can connect to this and run some queries. I'll be using the Beaver for running my queries. And you can see that right now, I don't have anything inside of my database. They're just a public schema without no tables in there. So I'm going to paste in a C script that's also going to take care of creating my tables. And this is what we're going to have in our database, a user's table, the issues created by a user, and then any comments made by users on a particular issue. The schema is pretty straightforward. I'm using integers for IDs and it's going to be an auto incrementing value. Each user is going to have a handle when they're created. The issues table will have a foreign key relationship through the user ID column to the respective table. I've also got some status and priority columns to make this more interesting. And then the comments table is going to be assigned an issue and a user ID. And I'm going to populate 100 random users, 10,000 random issues created by these users, and then a million random random comments, random issues, and user IDs. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And it's going to take a couple of moments to complete. And by the end of this, it took nine seconds to complete in my machine. We're going to have some data to work with. So if I now refresh the tables, you can see I have them inside. Let's take a look at the diagram of our free tables. So let me zoom in. You should be able to see this better. So we have our users, the issues, and the comments. Now the comments table is going to be the most interesting one and it's what I'm going to use for my demos because it contains the most data so we'll be able to actually see how much an index helps with performance. So let's go ahead and write our first query. I'll open up my SQL editor and let's say I want to select everything from the comments table where the user ID is equal to one. So we can execute this and get back the results. But how do we actually understand what happens when this query is run against our database? And how can we troubleshoot performance? There's a command that you really have to internalize if you're working with Postgres or any other relational database that allows you to take a look at the execution plan. If I go ahead and run explain analyze, I'm going to get back the query plan for this particular query. And here we can see a couple of things. First, there's the cost for the query, which is around 19,500. You can think of this as just a numeric value representing how expensive this query is to run. Then we get more details on what's actually happening under the hood. So here you can see a sequential scan on the comments table, applying a filter on the user ID column. For each of the operations performed, if there are multiple, you get the individual costs. And lastly, we see the total execution time, which is around 21 milliseconds. Now, how can we improve this? Well, we can go ahead and create an index on the user ID column in the comments table. We can do this by saying create index, and then let's say index comments user ID. And then we have to specify on which table we are creating the index and on which column. So if I go ahead and run this, we'll get our index created and it's going to be populated with the data in the comments table. And now if I rerun the query, remember that it took, let's say 21 milliseconds to execute previously. And let's run explain analyze again. And now we are down to a cost of 12,400, which is noticeably less than the previous one. And our execution time is down to five milliseconds. Now what changes in our actual query plan is where we previously had a sequential table scan, we can now do an index scan on our newly created index, which allows us to directly apply our filter, which is the user ID column with a specific value. And this narrows down the search results where we can now only fetch those pages from the comments table that match our where statement. Now let's make a brief digression to explain what an index actually is. So you can think of an index as let's say an array of key value pairs and the key here is our index columns. So let's say we've got column one and then column two and so on. And what we do is we map the values of these columns in the index to the respective 
pages and the primary key values of the rows in the tables. An index is going to contain a bunch of these values. And what's also important is these are going to be sorted in ascending order by default, but you can also store them in descending order. And you define this when you create an index. Now, if you had some computer science education, you know that an index is usually represented as a tree data structure. And one of the most popular ones is a B tree, where each node represents one value in the index. And in the leaf nodes, which are at the bottom, we have the values that map to the tuples inside of our table. So this allows us to perform efficient search when I say something like find me all the comments where the user ID is equal to one, we can then go ahead and traverse our B tree to find exactly the rows where this is true, and then return only those rows. Now there's obviously a lot more going on behind the scenes. But this is kind of the high level explanation of what's actually happening. Now here's a fun question for you. If I execute a query like count star from the same table, so we're selecting from the comments, and I also want to match by the user ID, let's continue using the same one, what do you think? if this is going to be helped by the above index. Well, to be able to test this, let's do a drop index command. And we'll first execute our query without the index. So let's do explain analyze. And you can see that the cost for this is 18,500. We're doing a table scan, which can be done in parallel. And still this takes 21 milliseconds. Now, if I go ahead and recreate the query that we used previously, and now we do an explain analyze, this time you can see we are getting a noticeably cheaper query. The cost around this is 233 and it executes in 0.7 milliseconds. This is because we don't need to access the table at all to satisfy this query. We can do a count directly from the index, which is what you can see from the query plan here. We're doing an index only scan, which means there's no table access and we can get the result for this query. I'll do an explain analyze on the previous query again. And this time what you'll see is this is an index scan. It's not an index only scan. And this is because we can scan the index to find the rows matching user ID equals one, but we still have to access the table for these rows to fetch the actual columns. So that's an interesting difference between an index scan and an index only scan. Now let's run a slightly different query. I want to see if I can fetch the comments where the issue ID is one. And here you can see that we are back to a table scan because our index that we previously created is only on the user ID column. So the index doesn't help. The cost is 18,500. But what would happen if we created an index? So let's call this index comments and then issue ID on the comments table and the issue ID column. So let's go ahead and create the index. And now if I rerun my query, you can see that this executes much faster. The cost is down to around 380 and our execution time is down from 21 milliseconds to let's say 0.2 milliseconds. Now this is because our result contains very few rows. There's around a hundred rows in the result. And when we do an index scan, we can very efficiently find those 100 rows. When we have to do a table scan, we unfortunately have to scan the entire table, which contains a million records. So this is why we have a huge performance improvements when we add a query. Now here's another interesting query, and I want to see if you can understand what's going to happen here. So let's say we do an explain analyze. Our query is going to be select star from the comments table again. And this time I want to match on the user ID being equal to one and the issue ID being equal to let's say one. What do you think is going to happen with our two indexes that we just created? Will the database be able to combine them to get the results faster? Well, let's run this and let's take a look at the results. And you can see that the cost for our query is 119. It completes in about 0.5 milliseconds. And as you can see, we have an index scan on both of the indexes that we have in our table. So we've got an index scan on the user ID index and the issue ID index. And then the database is creating a bitmap to match the results of these index scans and be able to find the rows that match both conditions. Now, just for completeness, let me drop our two indexes and I'll also drop the one on the issue ID column. And then let's rerun this to understand the performance implications. And now we're back to a cost of 19,500 and our execution time is again around 21 milliseconds. And if you recall with the two indexes present, let me just create them quickly and let's rerun explain analyze, we go down to 0.5 milliseconds and a significantly lower cost. So even when you have multiple indexes on different columns, they can be helpful even when you combine multiple conditions that also include these columns. Now here's a more complicated query. 
we want to select all the comments where the issue ID is one. Let's also say the user ID is one. The comment was created sometime in the past month and we want to sort the comments in descending order based on the created at column. So if I go ahead and run this, what do you think is going to happen? You can see we are able to still utilize our two indexes on the user ID and the issue ID column. So this is very similar to our previous example, but we still have to find the matching rows perform a filter on the created at column and then sort the results in descending order. This has costs in memory, but also in CPU time. If I go ahead and again, I drop my two indexes. Let's see what happens when we don't have any indexes in place. We of course do a table scan. The cost is 22,700 and our execution time is let's say 22 milliseconds. Now, if I go ahead and recreate our indexes, on the user ID and the issue ID column, we go significantly down in cost, 219, and our execution time is, let's say, 0.4 milliseconds. Now here, I want to show you something that's interesting. When we create an index, we don't necessarily need to create it on a single column. We can create an index on more than one column. So let's say index comments, and I want to include here the user ID, the issue ID, and when the comment was created. We'll create this on the comments table. And then I just want to include my three columns, the user ID, the issue ID, and created at columns. So if I create this index, do you think it's going to be more helpful for this query? Remember that we currently have an index scan on our two respective indices, and then we need to perform a table access to fetch the created at column, do our filtering, and then do our sorting. So let's create this index on our three columns you can see is created. And now I'm going to rerun our original query. And you can see that the cost is now down to eight from a hundred something with the previous example. And our execution time is down to 0 0.03 milliseconds. So this is a significant speed up compared to a previous example, because we can exactly match the condition that we have in our query to the definition of our index. Now, what's also helpful here is that the index is a sorted data structure. And by default, it's sorted in ascending order, but it's trivial for a database to just read the index in reverse, which is why we now have an index scan backwards because we are sorting in descending order here and we can do a direct match on the index condition and this gives us a significant performance improvement. Now if I make this query more complicated, let's say that we want to make sure that the comments were not archived, we'll have to additionally filter the search results so it's going to increase our cost a little but I added this to show you an interesting use case that Postgres has and a couple of other databases also support this and it's called a partial index. Now let's say that 99% of your queries have to match on the archive flag and we expect the value to be false. What you can do is create what's called a partial index that only contains the row matching a given index. So I can add a where statement to my index definition and I can say only index to rows where archived is false. So I'm going to execute this. And if I rerun this query, you can see that there's now only an index scan. And even though we have archive false in the where statement, it's nowhere to be found in the query plan. This is because it's implicitly there because this is a partial index. Now, if I omit this, and we execute this query, then you'll see that we're back to a table scan because we have a partial index and it's not useful for a general query that needs to do filtering on all the rows in our table. So just something to be aware of. Now what you can do is have these as separate indexes. So let's say not archived and I'll create these two indexes now. One is going to be partial and the other one is just going to be our original index. So let's create both. And if I rerun this, you'll see that this now prefers our general index, even though we have a filtered one. So that's why it's important to understand which indexes are being used in your database, because indexes are not free. What I mean by this is we have to pay some cost to get all of this performance, right? So you have to ask yourself, where does this cost come from? Well, you can run a query like this to get some information about the indexes and also primary keys inside of your database and their size. So what I have here is a list of the indexes in my database. 
and their size on the disk. So you can see that our user ID and issue ID indexes are similar, almost seven megabytes in size, but our composite indexes with multiple columns are 30 megabytes. What's interesting here is that because the majority of our queries are not archived, the two indexes are almost the same in size at 30 megabytes. And because the second index isn't used by our query, this is storage cost that we are paying for no use at all. So we may as well go ahead and drop this index and just free up some memory space and still retain the performance benefit of the initial index. Another cost you're paying with indexes that's not explicitly stated here is that the indexes have to be created and updated as we are inserting, updating, and deleting data. So now all of your write queries are going to be somewhat slower because we also have to update one or more indices that you have on the respective table that you are writing to. So I hope this quick overview was helpful. There's going to be a link in the pinned comment right below. You'll be able to just download this for free and you can test it out locally and play around with some different queries to understand how indexing is helpful for your database performance. I know I mostly do .NET related videos, but I want to hear from you in the comments what you think about a video like this, where I focus on some interesting aspects of software engineering that aren't necessarily .NET. Now, if you're still looking for .NET topics, go ahead and take a look at this video next where I show you how you can optimize your EF core queries to make them blazing fast. Go ahead and smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.